Reaction on the story. I'm joined by Sinawa Tambo, EFF's Member of Parliament. Sinawa, good evening and thank you so much for your time tonight. What's your reaction to this latest development given the fact that uh, in recent days we saw your political party marching to separate offices demanding the approval of two vaccines and this one was one of them? Uh, evening, Bongi, well, and greetings to you as well. The EFF uh, is delighted and welcomes the approval of the corona vaccine, which is uh, produced by the pharmaceutical company Sinovac for use of the deadly coronavirus. Uh, the EFF has, of course, long maintained that the only way to come out of the deadly pandemic and return the country to a semblance of normality is through a massive and aggressive vaccine rollout program. And this is a step towards that the EFF welcomes. And of course, the approval of this vaccination process, no matter what detractors or desperate people might want, might want to say, cannot be separated from the principled mass action of the economic freedom fighters on the 26th of June, demanding a variety of vaccines to be approved in order to allow people in the country to be first to really choose which vaccine they want to receive, but also to also be able to protect the country from unnecessary and frivolous lockdowns and, of course, unprecedented loss of life. So it's long overdue. And this is a result of the uh, which has the process for approval because of vested interest in uh, the J and J vaccine, particularly as a result of those who occupy the highest positions of power at the NTT. And the EFF welcomes this step, and of course, we'll continue to apply pressure to allow the approval of Sputnik V and, of course, the vaccine from Cuba, so that uh, we can finally end this nightmare that has been constructed to South African people. Now, this uh, approval is still subject to some conditions, and this, of course, includes the submission of safety data. So it doesn't mean, then, that it's all systems go. Yes, we have taken note of that as well. Uh, I'm not sure if sometimes of the idea that uh, this preliminary approval is there is going to quell the efforts of the ESF to apply necessary political pressure for the approval of this vaccine, because SAPRA is subject to an international global regulatory authority in, in terms of the World Health Organization. And these vaccines have been approved by the World Health Organization. So what SAPRA is doing is subjecting vaccines that are at odds with their capital interest to unnecessary, long drawn out administrative processes that, that are only going to affect the people of South Africa. Because on top of that, they are also even their role of the vaccine process is hamstrung by out of unnecessary administration and which is relevant to a very long drawn out process of approving vaccines. They say people must go and register and all sorts of tedious processes where people should just be allowed to get vaccinated upon uh, presenting valid identification. So we take a note of that and of course that is going to inform our decision going forward in terms of how we approach the leadership of SAPRA entity itself and the question of vaccines in this country. But and this is a step in the right direction and I uh, just want to emphasize hmm. this point. And Sinawo, uh, you know there's been concerns, uh, you know, by some experts who are saying that the country's vaccination program, you know, is really not what it should be and time is really running out. Do you agree uh, with this particular statement, especially even, uh, you know, in light of what we've seen? Because China says that it's got doses that are available to then be sent to South Africa, but it cannot do so uh, as yet because there's still some safety data that is still outstanding and there are now calls that these vaccines must at least be available by September. Absolutely. We agree that uh, that's, there's no, there's never been, in fact, a vaccination program in South Africa, a dependable, a very viable one. It, and there's been a peacemaking approach, a reactionary approach, and seemingly an approach where the government of the day wants to have a visible presentation of a loss of life and the intensification of infections in the country. So there's not been a vaccination program, and that's why we find ourselves where we are today, unable to have any dependable program in terms of dividing the economy, are able to open up the country fully and go back and forth in terms of lockdowns. And the longer Sabra continues to play politics as a result of Helen Bruce's association at that, which is uh, the primary producer and the uh, rollout of J and J, the more we won't remain in the current situation we are already experts are predicting that we are going to be in the fourth wave in October. Because of the slow vaccination process that is currently taking place, 16 million people are supposed to have been vaccinated by the 27th of October when elections are supposed to be supposed to happen. 
So extremely far from that target. We haven't even fully vaccinated fully 2% of the population. So there is no vaccination program, and the longer supply continues to drag its legs because of those who control its levers, because of the funding we have received from Bill Gates and NT, the longer we are going to be subjected to conditions where our people continue to go hungry, our people continue to suffer and die, and there's no health infrastructure to make an important intervention in that regard. Sputnik 5 is yet to um, be approved, and uh, it, it, it was one of the vaccines that uh, your political party mentioned in that march to SAPRA offices. What happens then uh, next for uh, the EFF, as you had said, that then should you not get the necessary approvals or the responses you are waiting for, you are going to stage a sit-in at the SAPRA chairperson's home. Uh, what's next? What's on the cards for the EFF? But the EFS maintains that the chairperson faculty of Sabre Ellen Reese must resign from the position because of a palpable conflict of interest in a sector that is so critical during this time of the deadliest pandemic that mankind has seen in the in modern society. So we maintain that, and of course, we do maintain that vaccine approval must be excluded, particularly of Sputnik V, whose efficacy has been revealed to be above 90%. So we have to go to intensify mass action in that regard because we must be able to firstly understand that political defense, political disagreement and protest and demanding things in this country, that activism is as essential as getting food, is as essential as getting vaccination. That is one of the most effective methods of getting this government, which has exhibited its incapacity and incompetence, to get it moving and to protect and save lives in this country. So when we do embark on these mass actions, when we do embark on these protests and confrontations of people who are standing in the way of the lives in South Africa, we're doing so because it is as necessary as getting going to the supermarket for food, it is as necessary as retail workers, it is as necessary as people being able to go to their jobs and provide for their families and protect their livelihood. So we must receive political dissent and disregard the demand for vaccines within that framework and within that analysis that it is necessary and we must expedite that process. And of course, the EFS is going to intensify its demand for the approval of all vaccinations so that our people firstly are able to have a choice and that we're going to have a variety and a properly dependable and verifiable vaccination program. All right. Uh, thank you so much for your time tonight. That was uh, Sinawutambo, who is the EFF's Member of Parliament. Uh,